did you know that some people need to be pushed to a goal and some people need to be pulled to a goal? I didn't know that when I first started managing people. It never occurred to me, did not see it coming. I am very much a pusher and really I'm a nudger. All you have to do is nudge or suggest that I accomplish a task or a goal and I'm on it. I'm very much, much an execution type of person, very goal oriented person. But not everyone is wired that way. And there are some people that really need to be pulled to a goal instead of pushed. And I didn't even fathom that that was a possibility until I had this interaction with one of my senior analysts a few years ago. Now, before the time I was 30, I was running a 16 person department of analysts and engineers. And I had worked my way up very aggressively, very competitive person. But honestly, I didn't know what I didn't know. I was a high achieving person, but I was not prepared for these leadership styles or these leadership tips and how to manage people. And I certainly didn't know about pulling versus pushing. But there was one analyst on my team that I was, I was close to. We worked really well together. And he had come to me and said, you know, I'm ready for the next step. I want some more responsibility. And so we decided that we were going to grow his service line. He was the subject matter expert in what he did, really hardworking employee. All of his clients loved him. He had cross-trained other analysts on the team to do his work. And he was, he was really ready for that next step. So we sat down and decided that we were going to grow his service line and I asked him to go ahead and give me how many direct reports he was going to have. I needed a business plan with a market analysis. I wanted revenue projections, all the information we needed to make a decision that we could bring to our administration for approval. And so he said, okay, okay, I'll, I'm going to do that. And so we had that kickoff meeting and some time had passed and he hadn't worked on it. And I would, I would say things like, if you have any questions, let me know or you know where to find me, or if anything comes up, you know, just call, text, or email me, just you know, come and see me. Or when you have something prepared, set up a meeting with me and we'll go over it together. He never reached out to me. He never set up a meeting. And I was, I was baffled. I, I didn't understand it. And so enough time had passed and I started becoming frustrated because I didn't understand what was going on. So I went to my boss who was the COO, and he gave me the advice of, well, Lindsay, there are some people that are pushers and some that are pullers. <laughs> me being young and naive, I was thinking, well, the man's not a door. But, you know, I was desperate for help and clearly I needed it, so I sat and listened to him. And he told me that there were some people that you pushed toward a goal and some people that you had to get out in front of and pull them toward the goal. And that's what this guy was, he was a puller. So when I started to do that, he responded. For example, I, I took the initiative, instead of asking him to do it, I took the initiative to set up weekly progress meetings. And then in between each meeting, I would check in on him and I would give him some work and some samples and I would coach him. I very much took a coaching mentality, coaching him along the way. And every step in the process, I would get out in front of him, show him how to do it and coach him on how to get there. And we got there and he was a heck of a manager and that was absolutely the right choice for him. That was the right move. And if I hadn't realized, I didn't realize it. If I wasn't told that the man was a puller and not a pusher, that I may have given up on him. I may have just folded in and said, you know what, this isn't, this isn't working or worse. I would have done it for him and, and really undermined him and we would have broken trust and that would have been really bad for our team. And so I think about that now, and there's two things that I'm actually really embarrassed about. One is that I remember this guy would periodically tell me, Lindsay, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you get so much done. I don't know how, he would say things like, you're so motivated, you just kind of knock things out, you're a problem. And he, I, I thought he was complimenting me. Looking back, he was literally saying, 
I don't know how to do it. And that should have been my cue to coach him. And if I were a more mature leader, then I would have realized that sooner. He was, he was asking for help in the way that he could. And I was hearing, well, I don't know how you do it as an a compliment. And I was thinking, well, you can do it too. We're just, we're just solving problems. You can do it. He didn't need that. He needed coaching. He needed to be pulled. The other thing, I mean, that's bad, but this, this is worse. The other thing that I'm ashamed of is that's the first time I realized it. So now I think about who else did I dismiss as unmotivated? They didn't, they didn't have the initiative. They were lazy. They were lackadaisical. They weren't a hard worker. Who else did I dismiss before I even realized that there were pushers and pullers? I've got to be honest with you. I still struggle with this today. I still have very much a push mindset and I have to constantly remind myself there are some people that you have to pull. And so I, I would love your advice, honestly, of your different leadership styles between coaching, mentoring, directing, partnering, pushing, pulling, all the different leadership styles. What has worked for you? What is working for you? I hope that you'll share them in the comments below so that we can learn together. Like I said, I'm still very much learning. I know I have a long way to go. So I appreciate your help. And I know that my team will too. Thanks y'all.